Are you ready for 24 months of COVID-19? In other words, two more years of these shutdowns and these cases all over the country and all over the world and the economic fallout of it and everything that we've all been dealing with for the last several months. Can you handle it for two more years? Here's why I ask. It's not going away. Now you can follow all the politicians and all the clergy and all the business people and the economic advisors and the presidents of the chambers of commerce and the mayors and the governors and go all the way up the line and they are employing what in mental toughness we call wishful delusional thinking. This is a virus. It doesn't care about money. It doesn't care about politics or race or anything else. It's a virus. And if you've studied this at all, or at least followed the scientists behind it and tried to ignore the people that are employing wishful thinking, it's pretty easy to arrive at the conclusion that this is not going anywhere fast. This is the new norm. Okay, so you might be saying, well, Steve, you're wrong. I think you're full of it. And uh, all you have to do is go on social media and you'll hear every crazy, whacked out conspiracy theory I mean, it's just the world's just gone crazy, but in my opinion. But bottom line is, in mental toughness, we deal with hardcore reality. And I think you're going to have a hard time wishing away a virus because it's a virus. It's a pandemic. It doesn't just disappear. So how do you thrive through it? What's the, if this is the case, and I'm right, assume I'm right, for this particular, I mean, I'm not the one saying this. I mean, I'm, I'm following the science. I'm just ignoring everybody else and trying to follow the science of it and studying this. And, um, and I, I can't find a single scientist that actually has any credibility that, uh, that doesn't agree that this is not going away anytime soon. This is gonna be with us for probably a couple of years. Maybe we get lucky, maybe it's a little bit shorter. Bottom line is in the meantime, what are you going to do? I got three suggestions for you to at least consider. Number one, embrace the change. Embrace the shutdown. Embrace everything else. I'm not saying it's positive. I want this to go away magically uh, just like everybody else does, right? We want the world to go back to work. We want our kids to go back to school. We all want to be able to go back out and hang out in restaurants and, and uh, go back to church and bars and, you know, stores and everything else that, you know, just our old life, right? And get together with people. We all want that. There's no question about that. But what if you can't have it? This is what mental toughness is about. That's what the whole purpose of this topic, I've spent my entire 30 year plus career talking about because it counts when things get tough. And all of a sudden things have gotten really tough and they're most likely gonna get tougher. The question is, are you gonna be tough enough to not only survive, but to actually thrive through it, to come out on the other side of this virus better than you were before. So, so suggestion number one, as always in any crisis, in any, anything that requires massive amounts of mental toughness, embrace it. You're not gonna change it. You're not gonna wish away or pray away or delusionally think away a virus. It will not happen no more than you're gonna change the way the wind blows. <clears throat> So how do you embrace, we want it to go away, but it's not going to, so not anytime soon. So how do you embrace this new reality? How do you embrace it and say, you know what? I wish it were different, but it's not. How can I get my arms around it? Hey, how much more time do you have not commuting to work if you're not going to work? If you're working out of your house, if you're lucky enough to be able to do that, uh, which some of us are and some not, unfortunately, but if you are, how do you embrace that? You probably have a lot more time not commuting. You got a lot more time not BSing with coworkers all the time, which is one of the biggest wastes in corporate America. Are people talking at the water cooler, wasting nothing but time? Well, that's not the case anymore. For most of us, they're not getting together at our jobs or anything like that. So think about that. How do you embrace this and say, I'm going to make the best of this. I'm going to turn lemons into lemonade. These are old cliches, but they really mean something when things get tough as they are now. Okay. So number two, what can you, what can you learn from this? What can you learn from the landscape of this, this pandemic? In other words, Sun Tzu in the art and war says you've got to use the landscape, the local landscape 
to fight the battle or your enemy will do it for you. How can you use the landscape of a shutdown? How can you thrive through that? Well, one of the ways people are doing it is they're bringing everything online. We're learning online. We're, we're learning new skills, all these wonderful things we can do through the internet we could never do years ago. That's one thing. What we're doing in our business is we're bringing our entire business online to the point where if I never leave the house again, um, I can still operate a business in multiple countries as we have for many years, but we've built that business running around for 23 years, flying all over the world to do that. And that was fine, but now it's a different world. So we're converting everything like a lot of people are to the online world. How can you embrace the landscape, the local landscape with this whole shutdown, this whole shutdown uh, piece of the, of this, of this pandemic puzzle? How can you do that? That's, that's, that's number two. And then number three would be when this ends, and of course, eventually it will end. I just think later than sooner, but it will end eventually. How do you come out? What would be your ideal outcome for this crisis? If you could pick your outcome, knowing you're going to be mentally tough to do this, mine would be really simple to have every single thing we do be able to be delivered online. That's it. I hope we can do more than that when things go back to not, I don't know if they're going to go back to normal, but to when the pandemic is over, it'd be great to be able to get together with people. But if we can't, our ideal outcome would be 100% online operations worldwide, 24 seven. What about you? What would be your ideal outcome? Maybe you've got a job that you got laid off. A lot of people have been laid off, furloughed, um, all those kinds of things, cut back to part time maybe, or there's a threat that that will happen. Many, 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 many more companies are going bankrupt. This idea that these jobs are going to miraculously come back is a joke. This is, this is why mental toughness counts, because the world loves to delude themselves. People love to kid themselves. They love to live in a fantasy world, and I guess you can make a case for it to say, well, the fantasy world's better than the real world. Well, maybe it might be, but needless to say, regardless of that, um, this is the real world we live in. And the people that really get on in this world and are happy and fulfilled and they thrive are the people that adapt to the change, adapt to the circumstances instead of complaining that the circumstances exist. What would be your ideal outcome? What would that look like? If you've got a job, maybe your ideal outcome is you start a business, a home-based business. There's lots of things you can do. Lots of things you can do. I'm not saying it's gonna be easy. I'm saying there's a lot to do. What would be your ideal outcome? You put these three things together you put a plan to put them in place. And when this is all over, you could be five times as successful as you ever were in your whole life. If you, if you take action and move forward with a plan, you know what most of the world's going to do you guys, you might disagree with this, but and I'm not, you know, I don't have a crystal ball or anything like that, but I've been in business for a long time. I've studied psychology for 30 plus years, you know, and done whatever I've done in this, in this field. And I can almost guarantee you what 90% of the population of any first world country, including the United States is going to do nothing. They're just going to bitch. They're going to moan. They're going to complain. They're going to politicize things. They're going to, they're going to polarize the, 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 you know, the population with one side believes this and the other side believes this and all this nonsense. Why do you think people spend so much time on social media? Engaging in fantasy, engaging in delusional thinking. This, if you want to be successful, this is not for you. This is, this is looking at the real world the way it really is right now, not the way it was six months ago. That world's gone. I don't think that world is ever coming back. Again, I could be wrong, but I don't think so. I don't think you go through something as long as this is going to be, that we're going to go through this pandemic and you come out the same way on the other side. I don't think it's possible. It's like going through a war for so many years. You're going to come out of it different, maybe better, maybe worse, but different for sure. So think about these things because this is the time to do it, to plan for the long haul. Please do me a favor. Don't believe the politicians. Don't believe anyone that has any stake in this thing ending tomorrow because they're, they're, it's skewing their thoughts. They, they're, they want it so badly to be over that it's actually they're actually starting to believe their own delusion. And that happens with human beings all the time. And I could give you examples for 10 straight years. You know, it's very, very common. 
So think about this because the good news is of all of this is you could come out five or 10 times as successful when this is all over because you took this stance, because you looked at reality in the face instead of running from it like most people do. You embrace it, you get a plan, you manage the local landscape, you say, here's my ideal outcome, and you go to work. And because almost no one will compete with you because they're all living in a, most people are living in a delusion, you're kind of out there by yourself working toward thriving in a crazy, chaotic situation. So think about that. I'd love to hear your comments. And thanks for watching the blog. See you next time.